Hey everyone, Angie here and welcome um, to our Facebook Live Yoga. Um, this is sponsored by the Neva Lomason Library page and that's why I'm coming to you from their Facebook page um, rather than my own. So for tonight's practice, we will need a few um, props and so if you have them, then go ahead and grab them. We're going to have two blocks that we're going to use. If you have a strap, we'll be using that as well. And if you don't have a yoga strap, then you can always use like the uh, belt of a robe, something like that instead. And then kind of using a lot of props tonight, grab a couple of blankets. It don't, they don't have to be official yoga blankets, <laughs> um, but just something, you know, kind of smallish blankets about this size that you can roll up like this because that's what we're going to be using them for. We're going to need two of those. You can make do with one if you only have one though. So let's begin. Namaste. And so let's just start by sitting up nice and tall, finding um, your sits bones on either side of the base of your spine. And then you could always use one of those blankets or one of those blocks to sit on the edge of if you would like to do that, to have a little more height for um, the hips. And a lot of times that can bring a lot of ease to the lower back. And so if, if sitting here is making you strain the lower back, then sit on the edge of a blanket, sit on the edge of a block instead. So we're just gonna take a few breath here to get grounded and to prepare ourselves um, you know, mentally for this practice, especially practicing at night like this. We've had a full day that we have just completed. And so now it's time to put whatever might be left on that to-do list, um, the things that you didn't get around to today on your mind's back burner so that for the next 45 minutes or so, you're free to engage in some self-care and to give the entire body a nice stretch and to hopefully in the process give the mind an opportunity to decompress and just to push that reset button. So just getting in touch with each and every breath that you take, getting in touch with that rhythm of breath. And each of us have our own, this is Jasper, he's coming to check out what's happening. <laughs> Put one hand on your heart center in the chest and the other hand on your navel area. And then we're going to take some, some deep breath here. So we're going to see about keeping the chest relatively level while the navel moves out and then back inward. So as you inhale, the navel moves out slightly. The chest stays level. As you exhale, the navel moves back in. Let's do that three more times. Inhale. Feel the navel moving. Exhale, drawing in. Two more, inhale. And exhale, drawing in. Last one, inhale. And exhale, drawing in. And so just continue to breathe in that way as best you can so that there is movement in the navel. This is Kiki. She's now coming to see what's going on. <laughs> about sitting on the floor and starting yoga and all the pets come to investigate. As we sit here for just a few more breaths, just see if an intention comes up for you for this practice. It could be you know, just something you've been working on, maybe working on changing your perspective about something. Whatever it is, just bring that to mind now. And then for the next 45 minutes or so of our practice, each time you notice your mind getting distracted, you can bring this intention back into focus and let that help sort of bring you back to the present moment so that you can be more mindful of your breath, more mindful of the body, and protect your body from injury. Big breath in. Exhale, tuck your chin towards your chest. Inhale, roll your head toward your left side. Exhale back to center. 
Inhale, roll the head to the right side. Exhale, center. Nice and slow. Let's visit each side again. Inhale, left. Exhale, back to center. Inhale, right. Exhale, back to center. A lot of times we don't even notice tension in the neck until we start doing this stretch. And it's like, oh, goodness. There's some tightness there. So just enjoying this nice, gentle pulse back and forth. And then we're going to come back to center, tucking the chin. Inhale, lift your head back to a neutral position. Bring your hands back behind you and let them help you sit up nice and tall in a really exaggerated way because we're going to keep this extension through the spine as we fold forward, hinging from the hips over the legs. Um, so making sure that we're not rounding to fold. Okay, we want to stay away from, from that, but instead, like I said, sitting up nice and tall and then hinging from the hips to take that fold. So even if that means that you're up super high, um, if you still you know, feel that good stretch happening in the back body, lower back body, and in your hips, especially the hip of the leg that's in front right now, which for most of us is probably the right leg, um, then that's exactly where you need to be. As we go further into the fold, we reach the chest forward while sending those sits bones down the whole time. It's gonna give us a lot of nice extension. And then just tucking the chin enough to keep the neck nice and long here. Breathing, two more breath. And then inhale, lifting up onto your fingertips. We're gonna walk the hands over toward the right side, reaching to the right, hands are on the ground, and then folding over that right knee, and I'll turn back to the front to show you guys what that looks like. So I'm here, and then I just walked my hands over to my right side, and I'm folding here over that right knee again. You might be up kind of high, and that's fine too. Just to, to find your edge, where it is for you, just like we have, we each have our own rhythm of breath. <clears throat> we each have our own edge when it comes to the various poses that we practice in yoga. And then when it's a pose like this, where we go from one side to the other, so back to center, and then to that left side, we also are gonna have an edge from side to side. One side, we might be able to go a little deeper than the other. And so just noticing that, noticing um, which side is a little more flexible, which side is a little less flexible, and knowing that that's normal. Okay, most of us walk around out of alignment. None of us are perfectly balanced, so. Two more breath here on this left side. And then walking the hands back to center and coming back upright. We're gonna take uh, hands and knees positioning. And so here, if you had you know, sensitive knees, you could take one of those blankets and put it underneath the knees. And I'm actually gonna do that because I'm not really working on a yoga mat, but on the rug. So I'm gonna do a little bit more cushioning, and if you're doing that, just make sure it's nice and evenly folded so that it's easier to take that hands and knees positioning. So from your hands and knees, take a big breath in, and as you exhale, just press back into that first child's pose. So for this child's pose, your head can either rest on the ground forehead, or maybe resting your forehead on a block if you need a little extra height. Another way we modify child's pose is rather than having the knees hip width apart, we could separate the knees wide and come into a much wider angle with the knees. Make this pose, like every other pose we do in yoga, your own. So rather than trying to get your body to do exactly what my body's doing, um, see what's available to you, see what adjustments you need to make, and really make this your own practice tailored to you, okay? Now anytime you need to, you can come back into child's pose, whether the knees are separated or together, and just to take a break. So back to the hands and the knees now. If you did take the knees wide, go ahead and bring them back in so that they're right underneath the hips. And we're going to come into our dog tilt, cat tilt pulses. We do this every time if you're taking one of my classes because it's just such a good strengthening 
um, stretch. So inhale and come into your dog tilt by extending through the spine, sending the sits bones and the crown of the head slightly upward. Fingers are spread, hands are wide on the ground, and then we exhale and pull the navel in, tuck the chin and ground through the spine. Let the head hang here. Inhale back into that dog tilt. Exhale into your cat tilt. These are really good to do daily. Let's do three more. Inhale, dog tilt. Exhale, cat. Two more. Inhale, dog tilt. Exhale, cat. One more. Dog tilt. Exhale, cat. Squeeze in that navel in. I'm going to move back to a neutral positioning now. So we're gonna come back into a sitting, and this time when we cross the legs, we're gonna bring um, ourselves into that non-dominant crossing. So for most of us, it's going to be the left leg in front to do that. We're gonna take just a nice side bend, opening stretch. So take your right hand out to the side, reach your left arm up, and then just come into that side bend Toward this right side. Now, as always, you could turn your head, look down at the ground, or you could look out toward your screen, or you could spiral the chest a little bit and look up toward the ceiling. If you have your blocks handy, you can go a little bit deeper. You could let your right forearm rest on the block here. Take one more breath and then slowly start to make your way back. Upright. We're going to do the same thing other side. So now we take that left hand out to the side. It's going to pretty much line up with your hip. Right arm reaches up. And then again, we come into that side bend. We want to keep this right hip grounded the whole time. It's really tempting to let it lift up so that we can go deeper into this pose. But if we let the hip come up, we've really lost the pose there. So one more breath wherever you are. And then inhale, slowly coming back upright. We're going to sit up nice and tall. Bring your hands behind you to help you sit up tall. And then exhale, and we're going to take that fold with the legs in this positioning. And so like letting the chin tuck, you could rest your, your chin on your hands like I'm doing. If you're up a little bit higher, you can't quite rest you know, the chin on anything or the forehead on anything, you could still just have the chin tuck. So the neck is nice and long rather than trying to look out ahead of you. And bring, you don't want to bring any compression into that cervical spine. Instead, we want to make space there. So wherever you are in your forward fold, let's take one more breath. And then slowly make your way back upright. We're going to come back onto the hands and the knees here. <clears throat> and again, you could use your blanket if you wanted to, but hands and knees. Curl the toes under, send your hips up into that first downward facing dog. Feet are going to be about hip width apart. And at first, we're just going to sort of keep the navel pulled in to protect your lower back, but rock a little bit back, a little bit forward. Pressing through the fingers, pressing through the thumb pads. Two more rocks, forward and back. One more rock, forward and back. And then walk the feet up toward your hands so that you end up in a forward fold over your legs. Even if that forward fold is right here with the hands maybe on the shins and the torso is more so um, parallel to the ground. Or the hands could be lower. This is a place where our blocks could certainly come in handy here. So making sure that you're not locking your knees out. You want a very slight bend through the knees, a micro bend to the knees, and that's gonna keep you from hyperextending and bringing injury there. Let the head hang completely. One more breath. And then bend the knees really deeply here. Let your chin tuck. And we're going to roll our way up to standing all the way upright. I'm going to move the camera 
so that we can do a little bit with our standing practice. Another bird's eye view. <laughs> but I think you guys will be able to see me. I'm going to move my blanket out of the way for now. And so just standing up nice and tall. That's Kiki in the background there. Now, you can see me. <clears throat> Hands at the chest. We're going to inhale, reach the arms out and up. And then as you exhale, just fold forward, hinging from your hips. Inhale up part way, flatten your back, pull your navel in. Exhale into your fold. Inhale. Slight bend through the knees, reach the arms out wide, coming up, palms touch. Exhale, hands come to rest at the chest. I'm actually going to turn to the side where you can see me a little bit better, maybe. <clears throat> so hands at the chest, inhale, reaching out and up. Exhale, into that fold again. Inhale up part way, flatten your back here. Exhale, into your fold, hands to the mat, stepping back into plank, shifting forward, and this time lowering your knees and then lowering all the way down to the belly. Inhale, rolling up to cobra. Notice my elbows are bent, my shoulders are shrugged down. Exhale and lower. Inhale, hands and knees this time, curl the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. You're just hanging out in downward dog for a few breaths. I'm actually going to see if I can move this to where it makes a little more sense. It's too high. Let's see if this can be a little better. We'll see. Yeah, that's, that's a little better. <laughs> it's not so much of a bird's eye view. Walking, stepping, hopping the feet to the top of your mat. Coming up partway as you flatten your back. Exhale as you fold again, and then inhale, sweeping the arms out wide as you come up. Exhale, hands come to rest at the chest. Let's do that again. Inhale, sweeping out and up, just doing our full salute now. Exhale, fold. Inhale up part way, flat back. Exhale, fold. And then hands to the mat, stepping or hopping back into plank, shifting forward, toes, and either lowering your knees or full chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Just bringing some heat into the body. One more breath, down dog. Walking, stepping, or hopping your feet to the top of your mat. Coming up partway, flatten back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweeping the arms out wide, coming up. Exhale, hands come to rest at the chest. And then we're going to come into a wide standing uh, angle here, or a wide angle, or a wide angle forward fold. And so here you may or may not want to put your blocks in front of you in case you need to um, you know, use your blocks to rest the hands on if the hands don't quite come to the ground. All right, so big breath in, hands are on your hips, inhale, and as we exhale, we just fold forward, hinging from the hips, hands come to the ground underneath the shoulders. And just lift up partway flat back here, exhale into the fold. Let the head hang. Make sure that we are not locking through our knees, but we have that a little micro bend in the knees. And then we're gonna bring some activation into the core. And here you have to really make sure that you're bending the knees. I'm actually gonna to turn to the side and show you guys what we're gonna do here next. We're gonna make a figure eight with our hands we're just kind of tracing a figure eight on the ground so this is what it's going to look like kind of 
from the side, from that front view, notice how I'm bending my knees as my hands travel to one side. I'm bending that knee on that side, activating the core, strong leg energy, strong core energy. And then coming back to center, feet are facing forward. Knees are only slightly bent. We lift up part way and then we fold over the legs again. Opening through the inner thighs and through the hamstrings. Two more breath here. And then slowly start to make your way back up right. Bring the legs in together just to rest for a minute. Maybe shake them out a little bit. And then coming back to that wide angle. Toes are going to be pointing outward, facing outward. <laughs> and we're going to have the knees bent deeply. We're in our, our sort of, this is called our temple squat. And so we want the knees tracking over the ankles as best they can. I'm going to turn to the side to show you guys what often happens here is the knees will come in like this because the inner thighs get tired, okay? But we want the knees in a safer position over the ankles. And as soon as we start to do that, it makes you want to sort of jut your, your bottom out behind you, your butt out behind you. And so to keep that from happening, pull those lower abdominal muscles up, engage your core, drop the tailbone down. Thumbs in front, fingers in the back, inhale. And as we exhale, we're gonna take this right shoulder down and look out over that left shoulder back behind you. And then inhale back to center. Exhale, left shoulder moves down and we look out over the right shoulder back behind. Keep this pulse going, inhale center, exhale, right shoulder dips down. Inhale, center, exhale, left shoulder dips down. One more visit each side. Inhale, center, exhale, right shoulder dips down. Inhale, back to center, exhale, left shoulder dips back down. Inhale, center, turn the toes, face them forward, wide angle, as we come back into that forward fold. One last time for this wide angle coming into, you know, your deepest expression of this fold. Two more breaths. And one more. And then bringing the hands back underneath the shoulders. We're going to start to heel toe the feet in a bit and bring the hips down. So for some of us, we're gonna have to stay in that temple squat, okay, um, that we were just doing. If you have knee issues, then you're probably going to want to stay there. But otherwise, we're gonna work on coming into our full squat, full yoga squat. So bring the hands at the chest. Some of us might have to keep the hands on the ground. All right. And we just do the best to increase the distance between the navel and the sternum as best we can. Asking those heels to move down. If the heels don't want to rest on the ground, you can rest them on a, full, a rolled up blanket or a rolled up yoga mat so that they have a little bit of rest in the front so the ankles can release and relax. Now, for some of us, if we want to go a step further, this is a nice approach to crow. All right, so if you are practicing crow, then you can move along with me. You may forego that practice if it's not something that you're doing or just kind of stay in the beginning phases of it, but be safe. So we're gonna bring our hands down to the ground, and they're gonna be about shoulder width apart. Fingers are spread. 
and we lift the hips. So notice how I'm lifting my hips up, and that's going to help me place my knees just as high up toward my armpits as I can. I'm going to keep my arms bent, elbows bent, and then at first I'm just kind of shifting my weight forward, my, my center of gravity forward. Over time I might be able to lift, you know, one foot and then put it back down, lift the other foot, put it back down, and then if you feel like you've mastered that over time, you might be able to lift both feet. Rounding through your upper back, activating through your core as best you can, coming down when you're ready. And when you do come down, find a child's pose. Breathing here. So maybe you came into Crow tonight, maybe, you know, you're still just working on getting the hips down and moving into that full squat. Again, whatever your edge is, is fine. That's exactly where you need to be. Don't worry about you, where you were yesterday or a few years ago or where you want to be in the future. Just embracing where you are today and building on that practice as much as you can throughout the week. One more breath. And then slowly coming back to your hands and knees. I'm actually going to turn this way for, for, for now. <clears throat> We're going to come into a little bit of twisting with our um, thread the needle twist. So hands and knees. Knees are hip width. Hands are hip width to begin with. Inhale. And as we exhale, we're just going to thread that right arm underneath the left, bringing the right side of the head and the right shoulder down. Now, if you needed to, and your head doesn't quite rest on the ground, you could rest your head on a block. But you want to have your head resting on something. We don't want the head dangling here. And as soon as I start twisting to this left side, <clears throat> I feel my left hip wanting to jut out to the left side. So I'm gonna hug it back in toward the midline of my body. And either I'm gonna stay here or I'm gonna to start to extend this left leg behind me, pulling the navel in, keeping that leg extended foot on the ground, or activating the core enough to lift that leg. If you felt really balanced here, you could also lift the left arm. Fingers spread, palm open toward this left side of your mat. One more breath wherever you are. And if the arm is lifted, lower it first. If the knee is lifted, then lower it next. And then press through that left hand to bring yourself back upright. Now we'll turn to the other side. <clears throat> so other side, hands and knees. We get situated, inhale. And as we exhale, thread that left arm underneath the right. And same thing, the hips want to jut off to this right side. We just hug the hips back in toward the midline of the body. You might stay here, both hands, both knees on the ground, or you might extend that right leg, either keeping the foot on the ground or lifting that foot. It's entirely up to you. And then, of course, if you wanted to play around with lifting that right arm, you could do that. You might roll out. Don't fight the roll, just let it happen. If it does, take one more breath wherever you are. If the arm is lifted, lower it first, then the knee. Press through that right hand to bring yourself back upright. <clears throat> Breathing here. I'm going to come back into a sitting position. I'm actually going to move the camera. I am my own camera, camera woman, as you can see. <laughs> so here we go. Little adjustment. Grab your strap, your yoga strap. And we're going to do a little bit with shoulders before um, we 
and move on. So take the strap wide, you know, take your hands to the very edges of the strap and then make the strap a little bit shorter, but much, much wider than shoulder width apart, okay? Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, either just go halfway back or let the arms come all the way back behind you. Now, if doing that makes you have to kind of do that, <laughs> then that means that your edge is right here halfway and not all the way tonight, okay? Inhale, back up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, reach. Exhale, either halfway or all the way, whatever's available to you tonight. And then inhale, back up. Exhale, lower. Three more, inhale. And back. Flossing the shoulders, inhale, back up. And lower down. Let's do that two more times. Are you sitting up straight still? Are you rounding through your back? Are you caving in through your chest? So much for us to keep up with. One more time, inhale, reaching up. If we're in tune with the body, in tune with the breath, that's a way that we are being present. So if we're paying attention and staying connected on those levels, it's a little more challenging than for the mind to wander. Okay? Take that strap. Pull it off to the side. Lower down. Okay. Let's get into our non-dominant crossing since we've been sitting in our dominant crossing for a minute. I'm going to do a little bit um, of pulsing to help open through the hips and the lower back. So inhale forward and to your left, exhale back and to your right. So as we move forward, we're in a dog tilt with the pelvic bowl left. As we move back, the hips are slightly forward in a cat tilt and right. Let's do that three more times. Inhale forward, left, exhale back, right, forward, left, Keep it going. One more time in this direction. We're going about five times in each direction. So the next time you come forward, we inhale forward, right, exhale back and left. Keep it going four more times. And three, two, Nice and tall. I'm going to turn to the side here and do a little bit with our bolt, boat um, pulses now. So you can do this with your hands on the ground or you can have your hands out in front of you. But <clears throat> if you have your hands on the ground, we would inhale um, with our feet, um, you know, either on the ground or hugged in. And then we would exhale and extend the legs out. Inhale, coming in, either feet on the ground or lifted, exhale, out. Notice I have my left ankle crossed over my right. So if you're a little stronger in your core here, then you can do this hands-free. And we would actually inhale um, and reach out, <laughs> kind of through the legs, all right, through the knees. And then we would exhale and extend the legs. Inhale, pulling in, and then exhale and extending the legs. Inhale, pulling in, exhale, extend. Two more times. Inhale, pulling in, exhale, extend. Last time, inhale, pulling in, exhale, extend. And then coming back upright to a sitting position, nice and tall, and then exhale, Coming into a glorious forward fold, seated forward fold. Neck is long. Two more breaths. Shoulders relaxed. Relax to the jaw. And then bringing yourself back upright. Now, we're going to just repeat that same little sequence, but come back into our dominant crossing. So that right leg. We'll be in front, hands on the kneecaps, inhale forward and to your left, exhale, cat tilt back and then to the right, inhale, dog tilt forward, 
the left. Exhale, cat tilt back and to the right. Three more. Staying with your breath. One last one in this direction. And then the next time we come forward, we pause here and then come to the right. Exhale back and left. Inhale forward, right. Exhale back, left. Three more. Forward, right. Exhale back. Two more. into our crisscross bow, crisscross navasana. So inhale <clears throat> and the legs come in, exhale and reach them out. Inhale, legs come in. You might be, you know, holding on to the ground behind you. Exhale out three more times. Inhale in. Notice my back stays extended the whole time. Chest is lifted. Exhale out. Two more in. Exhale out. One more in. Exhale out. And then sitting up nice and tall. Maybe you bring the hands back behind you so you can get really exaggerated in this extension. And then again, coming into that lengthening fold here, breathing. Hinging from the hips, making sure the sit bones are still making contact with the ground. You don't have um, yourself completely lifted off of the ground, but you're reaching down through the sit bones at the same time, reaching out through the chest, that heart center. One more breath. And then use your hands to slowly bring yourself back upright. We're going to come into a chest opener. And so this is where <clears throat> we'll have our two blankets in use. This is a restorative um, pose. And so, you know, usually restorative pose, you think about the word restorative, there's rest in that word. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to sort of prop ourselves up using these two blankets. Um, and then we're going to rest in the pose. So, what you want to do, and for most of us, we're not going to roll this first blanket that's actually going to go underneath your chest all the way up, but about probably halfway for most of us. Now, when you get really open through the chest, you can practice this over a bolster if you had a bolster at home. But this is a good way to begin um, because it can be quite intense to open through the chest, to stretch through that heart center. Now, the other blanket is going to go right underneath the knees and that's going to support the lower back so that it's okay to extend the legs. Now, we want to place this first blanket roll underneath the very bottom of the shoulder blade so that most of the shoulder is going to drape out over the top and that makes this arch happen. And as you can see, it's really exaggerating this open chest, broadening through the chest. I have my arms you know, my elbows are bent, kind of like in a sacro cactus positioning, relaxing through the shoulders. I've got that support with the blanket under the knees. And that's going to help my lower back. If you needed even extra support, though, you could always have your feet on the ground, knees bent. But if you can't extend the legs to the blanket, it just makes it a bit more restful. Now, if you get down there and, and you figure out, I can do more, um, then you would come up, roll the blanket uh, into a bigger roll, and then reposition yourself again. Okay, so just see what's available to you. We're going to be here for about seven more breaths. Especially on the exhalation, just seeing if you can let go of any tension in the body. Or at least invite that, that letting go process to begin. So 
Really relax. Let's take three more breaths here. So to come out of this, we want to take our time by just rolling on to your side long enough to take that blanket that was underneath your shoulders out of your way. Can grab the other blanket too, move it out of your way for now. And then rolling onto the back body again. And it's always interesting when we come back to this recline position after doing um, the heart opener with the blanket. So you can do it with blocks too. A lot of you guys have done that with me before. Hug the knees into the chest. But when we come back to this recline position without anything under the, the shoulders, we sort of still feel the remnants of there being something there because we do feel like the chest is lifted. We do feel like there's more openness through the chest. Take the feet down to the ground. We're going to get a little bit of lengthening through the quadriceps. So bring your heels just as close to your glutes as is comfortable. Arms are down by your sides, feet are hip width apart. We're going to keep these knees tracking over the ankles rather than allowing them to splay out to the sides as soon as the hips lift. So even if it means you don't lift the hips up as high, try not to let these knees splay out to the side. Here's where if you do have blocks to use, we're going to put one of those blocks in between the inner edges of your feet and then set that block flat on the ground, squeezing the inner edges of the feet in toward one another as the hips lift up and keep your head to center. We'll keep those knees from splaying. And first, we're just coming to this basic bridge. Lifting, lifting, lifting. Now then relax through the glutes. Keep that relaxation through the glutes and see if you can Cap tilt and lift the hips up even higher. One more breath and releasing down. We're going to do that one more time. This time, if you can um, clasp the hands, then that'll be the next step. So inhale, lifting the hips up so you can clasp the hands underneath the body. And if you can, then wriggling up high onto the shoulders in an effort to bring your arms toward extension, toward resting on the ground. Knees are tracking over the ankles. This big openness through the chest. So if you can't quite clasp the hands, you could grab onto the sides of your mat with your hands and wriggle up higher on the shoulders that way. Take one more breath wherever you are. And then lift your heels, unclasp the hands, let go of the mat. If you're holding onto the mat, lower the hips back down and then move that block out of your way. Feet are wide, much wider then hip width, inhale, and as we exhale, arms are just out to our sides, we're going to let that right knee drop down toward the left side, left knee also drops to the left side, feet stay in place, inhale, center like windshield wipers, the knees move to the right side, inhale, center, knees move to the left, inhale, center, knees move to the right, Inhale, center, knees move to the left. One more time to the right, inhale, back to center. Exhale, knees to the right. Inhale, back to center. Grab your blocks, take them and place them under your thighs so that you can extend your legs and rest, but have support to the lower back. And then I like to have a little pillow under my head just to give my neck a little more support and then just resting your arms by your sides. I'm going to talk us through just a little bit of relaxation through Shavasana. So just getting in touch again with the rhythm of your breath. Allowing yourself to rest here. Not only Resting in the physical body, but resting mentally as well. And with each exhalation, letting go a little more deeply. Every inhalation, 
just be aware of all the space in your body, the space that this session helped create more of. And as you exhale, just release. Inhale, getting spacious. Open body, open mind. Exhale, release. Just a few more breaths here. As we sort of sit with the, the idea of eventually bringing movement back into the body. And when you're ready, just start doing that. Bringing movement back into the body, maybe wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes, stretching in whatever way feels good to you. The blocks out of your way, rolling onto your side when you're ready to make that transition from a reclined position so that you can use your hands to help press you safely back upright. And then just checking in with yourself one last time, coming into a very intentional um, sitting pose. Feel yourself in alignment, feel the shoulders rolled open, sliding down the back body, feel your weight evenly distributed between both sits bones, feel your pelvic bowl in a neutral position, and then let the palms of the hands come together at the heart. Slightly tuck your chin, hug your chest. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Namaste. And just remember, um, we're streaming live from the Sneva Lomason Library page every Monday night at 6.30 until they give us the go-ahead um, to begin meeting at the library in person uh, again for group classes. So until then, um, we will keep doing these classes virtually, and I hope that you can join me. Have a good night. Rest well. Bye.